Okay, so there is a question by one of the colleagues in the course. And the question is, what is a preamble in LT and what does it contain? So for those of you who are familiar with random access procedure and those who are not familiar with random access procedure, uh, let me explain at a high level first. So if this is your base station or a tower, and this is its coverage, and then when you as a user Let's use a color red. When you as a user want to power on your phone and after doing cell search procedure after SNR criteria, when your phone wants to get connect, connected with the eNode before the first time, it has to go through a procedure which is termed as random access procedure, abbreviated as RA. And in the random access procedure, the first attempt or the first step is the UE sends a random access attempt. And in that random access attempt, the first thing is, is the transmission of random access preamble. So during this attempt, a random access preamble is sent, which is termed as RA preamble. When you send this random access preamble, uh, the question is asking, what is this preamble? Is it some kind of a signal or is it some kind of uh, transmission which is being sent? Uh, in, in random access procedure. So the answer is random access preamble in terms of understanding, consider it as type of code or a ticket which is used by the UE to get connected with the eNodeB. So let's start with this understanding that random access preamble is a code or a ticket using which it will make an attempt uh, to connect with the eNodeB to let the eNodeB know that random access procedure is about to happen. The main purpose of this preamble transmission is to indicate the base station the presence of a random access attempt and to allow the base station to estimate the delay between an eNodeB and the device because if you see there is a distance between the eNodeB and the device so E node B needs to estimate how much is the delay and the distance before it can send a response. And based on that delay estimate, it will be able to send uplink timing adjustment commands as well. Because what happens is before UE sends a random access attempt, we know that in cell search UE has already been synchronized in the downlink radio frame by reading the radio frame. So it's already been synchronized in the downlink. The only thing UE needs to do next is it needs to send random access procedure before it can make an RRC connection request attempt. So coming back to the question of random access preamble. So this just acts as a ticket to make an attempt. Now there is more than that. And there are 64 preambles. There are 64 random access preambles in LTE cell in each cell, uh, 64 preambles arrive. So let me write it over here. They arrive in system information block two you are familiar with system information. So in system information block two preambles arrive. So there are 64 of them. Okay. So the question now comes is, okay, how do we know the 64 preambles and uh, are there any certain types so on and so forth? So in order from the perspective of visualization, so let's say uh, if I'm, if I draw just for symbolically, let's say the preamble sets, here and I will tell you what the structure of a preamble looks like. So let's say this is preamble set one, this is preamble set two, and then there is another number of preambles which are reserved for contention free. So let's say within them, there are different preambles. And these ones are for contention free access. Let's call this one as preamble set one. So let's call this as set number Question comes is what about these subsets or sets which are drawn over here and let's say there are total 64 preambles. Uh, let me say these are 64 preambles. So as I already mentioned and why they are they have been divided into different sets altogether. So the idea is the subset is used to select the preamble sequence from a given amount of data the device would like to send. So meaning a uh, device will select any of the preamble from any of the subsets depending on how much amount of data the device has to send and also the selection of preamble also depends based on the power perspective. If UE has to send a lot of data in the uplink transmission uh, then and it also has to use more power as well it will use preamble from uh, one of the sets. And then basically 
the preamble and the device used based on that preamble which is used among the sets e -Node b will be able to know how much amount of resources to be allocated in the uplink so that we can transmit data ultimately so that's the idea uh, which is used for the case of preamble the next question you need to know is how the preamble structure looks like so what is a preamble structure how does it look like it consists of two things one of them is a preamble sequence and we already talked about the sequence so first thing is preamble sequence and then along with sequence there is an additional thing which is the cyclic prefix okay so a preamble structure consists of a preamble sequence and a cyclic prefix and the sequence we already discussed why there is a need to have a cyclic prefix so the reason to add cyclic prefix is so that when the uh, uh, random access attempt is sent to the e node b let's say this is the e node b tower and this is where a user is standing and it is making a transmission a preamble transmission so the cyclic prefix is the one which will allow in terms of determination of cells how long a cell is if a cell is of larger radius so let's say this is one cell and then there is another cell we draw it here let's say there is another cell of larger radius this one and if the user is standing over here uh, let me draw in this case the user let's say there is another cell over here and this wants to make a transmission to the other particular tower in that case the coverage area or the radius of the cell is bigger so for that case the preamble structure will have a longer value cyclic prefix or let's say a larger value cyclic prefix because in order to have any kind of multipath propagation effect number one number two is so that it can be sent up to cell for sizes even up to 15 kilometers as well in the in that range so with that being said as with the addition of cyclic prefix they are there are different forms of cyclic prefixes meaning there are different uh, sizes of cyclic prefix so that makes different configurations of preamble formats meaning uh, the pre random access preamble will have different formats because there can be different sizes cyclic prefix and in addition to that since we are transmission based on the coverage of the cell there will be guard period needs to be included as well so usually if you look at based on the distance depending time usually in any si in any preamble you will see a cyclic prefix which is included and let me label them here this is a cyclic prefix which is included plus this is the actual sequence for the preamble which is generated and there is a guard period which is included as well so usually with the preamble sequence of approximately let's say 0.8 millisecond there will be 0.1 millisecond for cyclic prefix and 0.1 millisecond of guard period as well as you can see so usually the idea of adding this guard period is so that in order to avoid it any kind of collusion with the other users that's why the guard period is being added now if you are sending for a larger radius tower if you are making a random access attempt for a larger radius tower let's say this is a larger radius tower you ue may have to use ue meaning end user may have to use a preamble sequence of configuration one however if the coverage of the cell is smaller if it's smaller then you may use a configuration of, of cell size zero okay so having having said that similarly we have configuration two and then we have configuration three as well depending if you want to have much more larger or different preamble sequences so there are these three different in fact four different preamble sequences which are shown over here now one thing you need to understand here is these preamble sequences are used both in case of ftd and ttd scenario for ttd there is an additional uh, preamble sequence or configuration exist which is called as preamble configuration 4 not shown over here though but then that's only used specifically for the case of tdd scenario okay so that's the idea with uh, preamble what it consists of what does it contain 